We present our technique of arthroscopic posture repair using a versatile split. The advantage of this technique is that it allows for excellent manipulation of instruments through the subacromial space while preserving any intact Sharpie fiber attachments to the rotator cuff footprint. Our patient is a 53-year-old male whose MRI demonstrates a posture lesion. Shown as a right shoulder into lateral decubitus position using a 30-degree arthroscope viewing through a standard posterior portal. The location of the posture lesion is marked using an 18-gauge needle and OPD a suture. Through a high lateral portal, a hooked electrocautery is used to make a 1 cm longitudinal split in the tendon above the tear site. We prefer to use this electrocautery as it makes a narrow hole in the tendon and minimizes tissue damage. Alternatively, a beaver blade may be used. A 3.5 mm shaver is then inserted through the subacromial space, through the bursal split, and into the tear. While viewing from the glenohumeral joint, the tendon edges are debrided and the footprint for anchor insertion is prepared. A double-loaded anchor is placed through a 5.5 mm metal cannula under direct visualization at the edge of the articular surface. The metal cannula is small enough to easily fit through the bursal split, but rigid enough to allow for accurate anchor placement. Next, sutures are then passed in mattress fashion using the surgeon's preferred passing technique. We use an 18-gauge spinal needle and OPDS suture to increase the accuracy of suture placement. Another advantage of the bursal split technique is, if necessary, the ability to place a grasper through the split to grab and pull the retracted articular sided portion of the pasta lesion laterally to ensure full thickness suture passage without passing sutures too medially in the bursal portion of the cuff. A suture retriever is used through the subacromial space to retrieve the anchor and passing suture and the suture is then shuttled through the rotator cuff. This process is repeated until all sutures are passed. The sutures are then tied using arthroscopic knot tying techniques. Please note that one knot stack is anterior to the bursal split and one knot stack is posterior to the bursal split. The sutures are shuttled to an accessory portal for suture management and a probe is then used to identify the remaining longitudinal split in the tendon. A second double loaded anchor is placed through the split at the lateral footprint. The arthroscope is then moved to the lateral portal. A suture retriever is passed through the anterior portal to place suture through the anterior leaflet and through the posterior portal to place suture through the posterior leaflet to create a mattress suture. Usually, only a single mattress suture is needed to close the defect, but both sutures can be used if necessary. The arthroscope is then placed back into the posterior portal. Shown here are the lateral pass sutures prior to knot tying. Once tied, the bursal split is nicely closed. At this point, sutures can be cut. However, we prefer to add a lateral row knotless anchor to take tension off the medial row knots and to lay the knot stack flat. Next, one limb from each knot stack is grasped and placed into a knotless lateral row anchor which is inserted through the lateral portal. The sutures are tensioned, the anchor is secured, and the remaining sutures are cut. Final repair construct is visualized from the subacromial space. Finally, the repair is visualized from the glenohumeral joint and shows excellent apposition of articular margin. In summary, this technique provides all the advantages of converting a pasta tear to a full thickness tear without the disadvantage of taking down intact Sharpie's fibers. Thank you.